Hey y'all, Shelly here with another tip for hospice nurses. So I had a request to do a video on hospice covered medications, specifically what's covered by hospice and what's not covered by hospice. And I think that this is probably a debate for all times. Everybody has a different opinion or different feelings about this. So I'm just gonna try to keep it simple and talk about what Medicare says is covered and not covered. So according to Medicare, any medication that is related to the hospice diagnosis or related to the palliation of symptoms caused by the hospice diagnosis or related to the palliation of symptoms caused by the treatment of the hospice diagnosis should be covered by hospice. So let's take an example. Let's say we have a patient who has CHF. So their heart medications are going to be covered and let's say the CHF causes them to have edema. So their fluid medications are going to be covered. And let's say the persistent lower extremity edema causes them to have venous stasis ulcers. So they become infected. So the treatment of these infected wounds are going to be covered by hospice. Now let's say all of this medication that they're taking causes them to have GERD. So their stomach medications are going to be covered. Now they can't sleep because they're worried about everything. Their sleep medications are going to be covered. Their anxiety medications are going to be covered. All of these medications are going to be covered. Let's say this patient also has diabetes. Diabetes is not related to their heart failure, so none of their diabetes medications are going to be covered. Not their insulin, not the oral hyperglycemics, not the CBG test stuff. None of that's going to be covered. Let's say they also have hyperlipidemia. None of those medications are going to be covered. The patient is eating okay and doesn't have any, any issues utilizing their food or digesting, so um, vitamins and things like that are not going to be covered. Um, so this is kind of how you have to look at it. Now, I think where the confusion comes in, and I'll hear some nurses say, well, our hospice doesn't cover this inhaler. We see this common with the inhalers. So, but let's say you have a patient that's on for in-stage COPD and they have inhalers. If the physician says they need these inhalers to treat their symptoms, then hospice has to cover it. Medicare says hospice has to pay for it. Now, having said that, there are times we, we can use a more cost-effective alternative to what the person comes to us on. And we definitely want to do that. We always want to be good stewards of our hospice's resources whenever possible. But some patients are, I think, emotionally and mentally, they need this one particular inhaler. Even though we know physically this other one works the same, it's, this one inhaler is what brings this patient peace and comfort. And so that patient should have that inhaler and hospice should pay for it according to Medicare's guidelines. So I hope this tip was helpful. If you have any tips that would be helpful for hospice nurses, please let me know. I'd love to share them here. And remember, together we can change our world.